Thank you to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to try out Autodesk Sketchbook as this was actually highly requested and I actually know a few people who use this program from time to time to draw. So I wanted to do a little bit of testing and show you guys like a drawing or two of me using this program. So this is kind of like my little scratch page for now just because I wanted to do a little bit of testing of the brushes. But usually before I actually do anything, I like to check whether or not the program has a pressure curve or sensitivity uh, thing that I can adjust um, but I believe it might be in the pro version as this one does not seem to have any kind of pressure curve for me to change which kind of sucks um, but I'll talk about that in a little bit later and it'll be easier for me to demonstrate there but let's talk about the UI a little bit so this little floating pill shape thing actually houses your brush alongside with the color wheel and your color and it's kind of neat so I did have a gripe about this in a previous like previous application that I do like having a slide for my brush sizes which you can see is right here as well um, but I do like how convenient it is for me to have that floating little window to adjust the size as well by sliding it up or down or left to right to change either the size or the opacity um, and for the color you can have opacity or not opacity you can have saturation and I believe brightness so I think saturation is going left to right and brightness is going up and down with the slider which is kind of convenient if you just need small adjustments when you click on the circle, the color wheel opens up, which is very convenient as well. And for the pill thing, the little window, it's basically a floating window, so you can place it anywhere you like. Um, I do find it a little bit finicky. I'm not too sure if I cut out all the footage that had me struggling with it, but sometimes moving it became a little bit uh, difficult because I'm basically moving the sliders rather than the actual floating window. But for now, um, I was doing a bunch of testing of the different little settings at the top because there's some settings that I do like to have just right off the bat. I noticed that there was not any way to flip the canvas but it's because it's not at the top of the menu. I'll leave like a little red circle down below so you guys can see where you can actually adjust um, that alongside with some other shortcuts because I did not notice it because usually I'm drawing on the screen and sometimes you can't really see it. It does have a text tool. It has like a shape tool, a ruler tool as well. Alongside there is screen recording. There's also this predictive uh, stroke thing as well. But uh, one thing I think has like a strong point for sure is the brush selection. So similar to, oh, what was the other program I tried? I think it was Infinite Painter. It has a lot of brushes that seem like it's well suited for people who also like that, that traditional art kind of feel. And I feel like there's a few things that, I don't know, it feels like it could back it up. It is sectioned in that way too, where it has like these artists uh pens they have designer pens they have like legacy they have a bunch of pencil brushes painting brushes and everything sorted out like that so while i'm setting up this canvas for me to draw my oc masaki and that is who we are going to be drawing today uh, just for like a quick test i'm also changing the background color to be more of a dark purple for now before we can start to sketch um and I'm gonna run in a few problems right off the bat. Like I said, I didn't know how to flip the canvas from like horizontally until a lot later, which unfortunately I learned about it after I basically did the entire sketch. So sorry if Masaki looks a little bit more wonky. So you can see on the canvas, there's that little whitish, almost looks like a pokeball from here, but it's like completely white. Um, that's on the middle of the canvas at the bottom. So basically that houses a few of your shortcuts. So it also can toggle the transparency of your brush, which I kind of wish I knew about a little bit earlier, just because I do like doing that. And I find that the eraser tool is a little bit finicky. Um, I do like the softer one more so than like the hard one. It just seems like the accuracy, it's a little bit funky, but it's not too bad. I definitely like having the transparency toggle so that I can just switch between my brush and switch to it as an eraser just because it's a lot quicker for me. Um, but in terms of the sketch, I'm basically sketching the usual way that I do. So after changing the color of the background, I decided to go with a bigger brush and kind of just plan out the general posing or composition of the piece that I would like or whatever I can think of at the time so that I have a general idea before we actually do the actual sketching portion. Now I'm trying to remember what brushes that I use. So let me go ahead and open up a sketchbook so that we can see what brushes I was using at the time so I can let you guys know. Okay, so I believe for sketching, 
I switched from something called the fine line pen, which is found in the designer brushes. But for painting, I believe mostly I used a paint brush in the Legacy set. And then there's another brush. I'm trying to find what this is called. I believe it's under textures. And it's very similar to, I feel like, one of my uh, brushes that I like to use. I believe it's like the Sharp Render in Procreate. It just has like a similar feeling for the most part. But while I was working on the sketching portion, I kind of changed the settings from time to time because I was noticing that I had to press a little bit harder than usual to get the brush to kind of like appear the way I wanted to. So seeing if I could fill it with the sketches to see if I can fix that. But a lot of it I feel like can be corrected if I had able to change like a pressure curve or sensitivity. Just because once we get into the second session, um, you'll see how light my sketches turn out compared to uh, how much I have to like build up versus, I guess it's like initial stroke versus if you kept going back and forth, there's like a big difference I find. So there would be, it would be nice to have that for the free version, but because it is available in the pro version, at least they, they do have it somewhere included, which is nice. So for the illustration of Maseki, I kind of wanted to do kind of like the mask concept again. I decided not to do flowers because I was not feeling the best at the time. I was feeling a little bit sick, so I thought maybe I'll just make Masaki look like he's also sick um, instead of having the mask and him ripping it off and it's like a bunch of flowers or whatever, like the Hanahaki disease where it's like you're throwing up flowers or whatever uh, due to one-sided love or unrequited love. So. Yeah, that's kind of the, the thing I wanted to go for. I kept things pretty simple coloring wise and I'll explain it in a bit um, because we I didn't know about it until I actually had to uh, change certain settings and try to adjust my process a little bit because for me, in some other programs, I can follow the same process throughout because most programs have the same kind of settings or same kind of features. So one thing I rely on is one is Basically, when we get to the coloring phase, I'm gonna need to either alpha lock or layer clip and I do have a problem with that after because I believe, at least from my knowledge, I could not find them which causes me a little bit of a issue when coloring even though I don't do a lot of like bucket filling and then need to have perfect like precise shading and everything it just makes things a little bit easier if I can have uh, access to either layer clipping or to alpha lock because I can make do with alpha lock and not having layer clipping 100% but I believe this one does not have either and I'm not too sure if either of them is available for the pro version which kind of makes me think that even looking at the brush selection as well, it makes me feel that this one's more catered to people who might like doing more like painterly stuff or people who are more used to doing traditional art just because you don't have those kinds of tools where maybe you're doing... I actually, actually maybe I shouldn't say that because I have seen some people do more like graphic design-ish stuff on here too, which is really cool. So I do think it's a very versatile program. It just, I don't think it's suited for me and my workflow per se. I would have to change my workflow a little bit. Um, but for the most part, like everything kind of turns out similar to how I usually work. It's just some workarounds you have to... Um, kind of think of just because if your workflow is very specific like sometimes mine is you do have to kind of give and take here and there depending on what the program actually has to offer versus on what you potentially would want so yeah that's kind of the sketch portion for now I think once we get to the coloring portion, I'll talk a bit more about the UI, some of the settings and stuff, and how you can adjust certain things. Right here, I'm adjusting the color of the sketch prior before we get to the actual coloring portion, just so that I can prep it to make it look a little bit softer. But before we get into the actual coloring process for Maseki, I wanted to let you guys know about Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. They are snack boxes that allow you to experience Japan from the comfort of your own home, all packaged in these cute boxes. Tokyo Treat is the heaviest Japanese snack box with 15 to 20 full-size Japanese snacks, including a Japanese exclusive drink, an instant ramen, exclusive seasonal Kit Kats, and much more. I'll show you guys all the snacks included in the box. The theme for Tokyo Treat is Sakura Picnic Party, which I think fits uh, the month of April, though it is coming to a close. While Sakura Co. is an authentic Japanese snack box, with new seasonal Japanese treats every month. This box includes Japanese tea, cakes, 
seasonal Japanese treats, and even Japanese home goods.、Uh, this is actually April's box, which included this beautiful Sakura springtime dish, perfect for plating your cute and tasty snacks. And I always love that the box is spring theme because a lot of the snacks are going to be Sakura flavored. Both boxes come with a 24 page cultural guide, and the booklet includes information on each of the snacks, which also includes allergy information and if the snack is vegetarian friendly. Each month is a different theme, meaning that you get to try out a whole different new selection of treats and snacks every month. For example, while this is April's box, which is no longer available, May's box theme for Sakura Co. is the Moonlight Sakura, and for Tokyo Treat, it's the Sakura Starlight Snack Fest. So, usually, before we kind of get into the snacks, I actually like to make the tea first. I think that they usually pair very well and kind of cut a little bit of that sweetness for some of the snacks as well. The tea for Sakura Co. is the Sweet Sakura Tea. This one's a little bit unique,、um, as it was actually not in a tea bag. I had these loose, moist flowers that were directly placed in this little plastic container, and you can put this directly into your cup. So,、uh, to know when your tea is done, they actually bloom. So, the flowers are kind of like bunched up, but once you pour the hot water and let it steep for a little bit, they kind of bloom, and then you can actually really smell that floral aroma. And it has a little bit more of a subtle taste. I definitely think it's a little bit more. In a sense, a savory tea, in my opinion, but I do like it quite a bit and it tastes best when the water is very hot. I did drink a bit of it while working and with some of the snacks. Some of the snacks I was snacking on with the tea w a s the Sakura Karinto and the Sakura cookies, which I do both love a lot. But I can say that my favorite was actually the Sakura mochi. I don't have footage of me eating it, but I do like that one quite a bit.、Um, I shared the other one with my brother because I also know that he also likes mochi. I just think the Sakura flavor with the soft texture of mochi is just made it instantly my favorite. For a Tokyo treat, the Kit Kats are one of my favorites to try out as they're usually so many different flavors, and it's a good way to try out new Kit Kat flavors by getting these boxes. I also really like the Ramune candies, they're just easy to eat and they're perfect to kind of just like suck on while I'm working at my computer space. So, if you would like to get a box for yourself or want to give these as a lovely gift for your friends or family, then definitely check out the links in the description to get your snacks today. And thank you again to Sakura Co. and Tokyo Chi for sponsoring today's video. And let's get back to coloring Masaki in Autodesk Sketchbook. So, after I actually changed the sketch color to be just a little bit lighter and a little less saturated so that we can make things appear a little bit softer, I went ahead and switched to Uh, I believe it's just painting brush, which is under the legacy settings, or not settings, grouping of brushes. And I find this one's just the most easiest to use because it's kind of just a flat round、uh, for the most part. And it's just easier for me to lay down black colors. And then, oh, here's like when I was kind of running into a little bit of an issue. So when you click on the layers on the right side, it comes up with a bunch of different settings. And the different settings that it has is actually copy, cut, paste, duplicate,、uh, clear, merge, merge. All and delete, which are very、uh, typical things you can find for your layers so that you can easily manipulate the layers for whatever you need.、Um, but the other ones that it has is also lock layer. It also has the HSL adjustment slider and the color balance per layer, which I found very interesting. I do like the fact that there's the adjustment slider per layer just because it's easier to access rather than going through other windows just to adjust it. But the lock layer is truly just locking the layer. So, like, you will not be able to move it or budge it or make any changes. So, it's not the same as alpha locking the layer, which、uh, I was like a little bit. Surprised that none of the settings said layer clipping or clipping mask or anything like that. Even I think masking, I could probably learn how to do that to use it. But none of those options were available, and I'm not sure if they're available in the pro. But I know a lot of people want to use stuff like. Uh, layer clipping or clipping masks when they're coloring, just because it makes things a little bit easier to keep things in the line.、Um, or, like, you know, it's just easier for you to color a little bit more cleanly. And during my process, when I color the skin, After I lay down the base, because it's pretty much the most messiest layer that I usually put down, I usually like to alpha, alpha lock it so that I can do the shadows and everything and kind of stay within the color that I've already put down. So, because there's no alpha locking, I decided that, you know, we'll just have to wing it, we'll just have to shade and clean up afterwards and make sure things appear as clear as we can. And 
yeah, that's just kind of the workaround at this point. So I'm just gonna color as carefully as I can. Later on, I'm just gonna erase the edges because I manually color anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. It's just sometimes when you're doing shadows and stuff and you don't want things to bleed out of the outline, I guess, and into the background, that's where it might be a little bit of a hassle, but it's not too bad. That's why I'm kind of thinking like whether or not it feels like a more traditional art approach because in traditional art, obviously you're not gonna have that luxury unless you're using masking fluid or you're taping off areas. Most likely you're not gonna have that luxury of doing so. So yeah, just kind of like small workarounds, also just like small compromises. But um, another thing is that I had to adjust the brush a little bit to make sure that it's kind of more or less to my liking. So for me, I do like brushes that I'm able to adjust the, I guess it's, I'm not sure if it's technically opacity. It might be with the flow of the, the paint on the brush or whatever it's called. So basically if I use less pressure, it'll become a little bit softer. And if you use more pressure, it becomes a lot more harder and a little bit more like solid. So I believe in the brush settings itself, there is like, when you click on the brush, you have basics and advanced. So there's something that you can do in advanced that says pressure. So there's something called size with heavy pressure, size with light pressure, opacity with heavy pressure, opacity with light pressure, and then flow with heavy pressure and flow with light pressure. So I did change it so that with light pressure for flow, it becomes a lot softer. So I hit it closer to zero. And then with the flow with heavy pressure, I have it closer to a hundred so that I kind of have that full range again. So I do like the fact that there's this kind of versatility to adjusting the brushes, uh, different settings and stuff. And I do like the fact that they have one for flow um, and the different for light and heavy pressure. I think that's great um, because I'm a person who relies on that a lot. I know for some people it wouldn't really matter, but for me, I do like having that um, available. So once again, I went back to the sketch layer and I decided to change the sketch color to become a little bit softer. And there's no way for me to alpha lock the sketch. So I can't manually change certain areas to be lighter or darker. So we're just gonna have to wing it. So at this point, I decided to merge my layers downwards. I didn't show it, but I did add an extra multiply layer just to do an extra shadow on Masaki's right side, um, just because I thought it looked a little flat. After that, I merged everything and we can move on to the actual rendering portion, uh, which is basically me just cleaning up everything and making things appear a little bit more finished and a little bit more clean. So the brush that I'm using for that, I believe is under the textures. So I'm just gonna scroll here so I can make sure to tell you guys which one I was using. Um, I believe I was using texture number six or texture number, let's see, maybe it was number five. So there's a brush seven, num brush seven number, brush number seven that has kind of like a little bit of a texture and it's kind of more of a longer rectangular shape as you guys can see. I believe you can also use number one. I also like the shape of that one too, but it's just easier for me to use whenever I'm doing this kind of rendering. And you can see that I've been moving around the size and color pill floating window thing. So I've been moving it around because I find it a little bit easier to adjust uh, smaller brush size a lot easier. Oh. That's another thing I didn't really talk about too, too much. So I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to notice this. Usually when I color pick, I use my finger to color pick onto the screen, which this program does allow and I have it set, but later on I actually turned it off because I actually prefer the accuracy of the, the pencil to color pick. Now, I don't remember where I included it. Hopefully I included it somewhere, but I wanted to show that when you color pick, it selects a lot higher than you think. So for me to accurately color pick, I do like using the pencil because it's, it's just a little bit thinner than my finger. It's a lot fatter so that I can see what color it's gonna be picking up. So you can see every time I color pick, the little crosshair that pops up is higher than where my brush is clicking. So oftentimes when I do that, I have to drag it back down to accurately pick up the color. I do think it slows down the workflow a little bit, even though I do think the color could be more accurate if you could slow down and look at it properly. But for me, I find it a little bit slow because I usually like to pick up the color wherever I'm placing my finger on and just kind of having that little flash of the bubble of the color appear and you know what color you're picking up. This, like when I was working 
with kind of like my procreate habits. Whenever I color pick, I tend to pick the color right under my pencil, which tends to be the wrong color that I need. So yeah, it's just a little bit of a hassle here and there, but just small things I had to adjust to. Okay, but with that being said, just small nitpicky things that I feel like I'm just used to in other programs. I don't think it makes this program like a bad program to work with. I do like its interface quite a bit and I do like the fact that there's kind of like different options for uh, different things just like the slider. I think I would have felt a little bit slower if the only option to change the opacity and the size of your brush was only in the little the little pill slider thing where you have to slide up and down or left to right just because i do think the farther you slide it it does it kind of feels like there's a limit um, before you have to keep going back and sliding it again because the increment's a lot different compared to the actual bar. And that's why I kind of prefer the bar rather than this left and right slider. Because the bar, you can see your minimum and your maximum right away. So it's easier for you to eyeball a little bit easier. Or at least for me it is. Um, another thing I do like, I didn't really showcase it here because I didn't use it too much. But you can open up the color wheel and there's a way for you to pin it. So that you can have the color wheel always there uh, floating alongside you if you need to. But for me, because I'm mostly color picking and not opening up that wheel too much, I didn't think it was necessary for me to do. Um, but like, like I said, I do like the interface quite a bit. The layers are very easy and visible. They're not hidden by anything. Um, you have your, all your brushes on the side as well. Um, and you can click and drag some of the brushes from inside the larger menu and drag them into your setup uh, like I did so that I can have all of them all in a row. But yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I guess we're finished for today's illustration. I did not know how to get the time-lapse recording to fully do the time-lapse from start to finish, unfortunately. I only got like a, sh like a short segment of the sketching session, so I'm not going to include it. But the time-lapse recording is a little bit interesting. So it does record every time you zoom in and out and turn the canvas compared to other programs that allow you to have the time-lapse where it's just the overview of the whole canvas and you're watching the like the process go by without it zooming in and out or rotating. So I think that's a little bit different. I definitely prefer the one that's a little bit more static rather than seeing every twist and turn that you do just because it does get a little bit dizzying in my opinion. But one last little test I wanted to do was actually the kind of like sketching session. So I actually picked the 6B pencil. So I've, I've used the 6B quite a bit for sketching in Procreate. I think the pencil tool in Ibis Paint works well. I've used it, I believe, also in the Infinite Painter, but I wanted to use it here. And one thing I noticed right off the bat is the fact that I would have liked a pressure sensitivity curve. So once again, you're seeing that I'm checking again, also turning off that color picker for my pencil. I believe the color picker for the pencil is actually not as bad as the one in Ibis Paint. Ibis Paint, if you scribble back and forth too quickly, it'll register as a color pick, but this one doesn't do it, but it did pop up a few times. So I definitely wanted to have that off if I'm gonna be just sketching like this. But for me, you can see that even though I'm applying fairly normal pressure for the most part, I am using a little bit lighter pressure just because we're doing the very rough portion of the sketch before we move on. But you're gonna see that when I start to darken up some of the lines, I have to actually press pretty hard or go over the sketch a few times to get that desired value. And I don't think the pencil is actually supposed to be that light because I am using the 6B so it shouldn't be too too light. But I would have liked that there would have been a pressure sensitivity curve or something so that I wouldn't have to press and like press and dig my pencil into the canvas or into my screen to make it a lot darker. So pretty much uh, I kind of just decided that I'll just sketch lightly and at the end I'm just going to have to pick and choose some darker areas and just slowly go over them to make it a lot darker rather than just keep, um, I don't know, like I feel like on at least some other programs I'm able to do one stroke and it's a little bit darker, use a little bit less pressure and it's a little bit lighter. This one has that but your darks are still in the very light range so i would have liked it that if i use less pressure still it would be able to produce dark marks as well it would have been nice just because i would not like to burn through my my nibs alongside with not needing to damage my screen either but like I said, it could be more like personal preference. Maybe some people who are maybe heavy handed don't find too much of a difference. Or maybe I'm just 
not using the brush correctly or something like that but yeah i tried my best to sketch very similar to how i usually sketch with kind of like the 6b pencil so just basic shading darkening up some areas and i'm just drawing masiki once again because he's just the easiest for me to like draw from my brain from memory much easier i definitely like the second sketch of these two a lot more so we'll get onto that in a bit but you can see here and this is where i'm kind of darkening up the lines and i'm going back and forth quite a bit just to get those desired darker areas or i have to press fairly hard to get it to be quite dark i don't mind hatching like this though so it's not too too bad but i definitely think that if you're a little bit light-handed see if there's a way for you to adjust it in a way so that you don't have to press too hard to get the desired marks i guess or to make things a little bit darker than you, probably what it can do currently so even though this is my first time using uh, Autodesk Sketchbook, I actually had it downloaded previously, I think a couple of years ago because I wanted to give it a try, but I never got around to it. I think I have two or three, I think two mutuals who use Autodesk Sketchbook and they use it on their, I think like a different, like a, their Surface Pro or something like that. They have something else. So I'm pretty sure that this is available on a lot of other uh, devices which is kind of nice. And I've seen a different version that I believe is for maybe desktop, but has a little bit of other features because I believe I saw an alpha lock feature on those ones rather than this one. So maybe if you're interested, you can definitely check out if other versions are more suitable for what you need to do. But I had a lot of fun just playing around, uh, just checking out the brushes and stuff, checking out the settings. I don't use a lot of brushes usually when working on stuff because I am very comfortable using certain brushes that I like, like just a simple round painting brush, probably just a sketch brush that's pretty, pretty neutral-ish. Like the felt pen brush that I was using for sketching just felt nice. Also like the paintbrush worked well for me to do kind of like my rendering cleanup. And the 6B, I think pencil brushes are a very safe bet for a lot of programs. So that's why I like the texture of this one quite a bit. And it's just easy for me to like whip out a few sketches because I don't have to worry about uh, adding color. I don't really care about cleaning up things too much and just leaving things rough just looks kind of cute. So yeah, I do like this one of Masiki though because I think the kind of up angle, I decided to put him in a little bit of more casual clothes but also a little bit warmer clothes just because I thought it'd be cute to have a little bit of a thinner sweater with kind of a cardigan, like an open cardigan that might be a little bit longer. I kind of want to draw him one in one again because I used to draw him a lot with like a sweater and a cardigan together kind of more wintry but I feel like you can make it like more springish as well if it's like thinner material and I think it just looks cute I think maybe it's just his face that looks cute compared to the other one but I do like the texture of this brush and when I was playing around with the other pencil brushes as well I definitely think that 6b is my favorite i think there's another one it might be like 8b or something let me check really quick 9b i think 9 9b was nice as well and it's a lot darker i believe also i disabled the function for you to draw with your finger on autodesk sketchbook i'm not too sure if there's a way there's like a lot of different uh features also on the the preferences i disabled the two finger double tap for the frame canvas because i noticed that when i was undoing oh that's another thing i forgot to talk about so i'll quickly squeeze it in undoing and redoing i find it a little bit laggy or just not as responsive so sometimes you'll see me clicking the arrows rather than doing the double tap um, another reason why i don't do the double tap as often is also because before i knew that you could turn off the feature i Every time I double tap too quickly, it basically puts the canvas directly back into the center. Like, it's like as if you pinch really quickly in Procreate and it kind of reverts everything back to normal. It was kind of like that. But when I kept undoing and I kept doing that, it kind of just got on my nerves. So I turned it off and if I really need to undo really quickly, I'll use the arrows at the top. But I think that's about it for today's drawing session. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me kind of try out uh autodesk sketchbook for the first time i actually had a lot more fun sketching rather than the painting 
portion just because I was sick, had nothing to do with the program. But I do think you can make wonderful art in this program. I've seen plenty of people do it. I just don't think I did it particularly um, that much justice. But here's the Maseki drawing and the sketches that you saw earlier. Sorry that I couldn't get the time lapse feature to work entirely properly. Well, if you guys enjoyed today's session and I will talk to you guys next time, next video. Bye!